Objective 2. Divide a number by a decimal. When you're dividing by a decimal number, first count the number of decimal places in the divisor and move the decimal that many places to the right. This changes the divisor to a whole number. Once you do that, you move the decimal point in the dividend the same number of places to the right. Write in extra zeros if needed. Write the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in the dividend, then divide as usual, and again check your signs. Note, moving the decimal point the same number of places to the right in both the divisor and dividend will not change the answer. Remember math is all about balance. When we worked with equations, our balance was to make sure the left side and the right side were always the same. So anything you did to the left side, you also had to do the right side. With fractions, we always had to make sure that whatever we did to the top, we did the same thing to the bottom, again to maintain that balance. But with division, we're basically doing the same thing. We're multiplying the top and bottom of that division problem by 10 or 100 or 1,000. That's what moves the decimal point. And as long as we do the same thing to top and bottom or inside and outside, we will get the same answer. So here is an example. Divide 27.69 by 0 0.003. You cannot do long division with a decimal, so you're going to have to convert this to a whole number. In order to get 0 0.003 to a whole number, we'd multiply by 1,000. But you can't just change the bottom of a fraction. You'd have to do the same thing to the top. The shortcut for that is just moving the decimal places. We're going to move this three places to the right, so we have to do the same thing to the inside. Again, what's happening is that we're multiplying both the top and bottom by 1,000. Now we're just going to divide 3 into 27690, and your decimal will now be after the 0. Divide as usual. Again, notice you have to get all the way to that decimal point. In this case, there was that extra 0 needed, so we got an extra 0 at the answer. If you're not careful about your place values, you might get the answer 923, and that is not at all the same as 9,230. If someone owed you $9,230 and they only gave you $923, you would not be happy. You must have your numbers in the correct place, value, place values. Example, divide negative 5 by 4.2, round to the nearest hundredth. So first we're going to ignore the signs and just do our division, 5 divided by 4.2. The 4.2 goes on the outside. We would have to move that decimal one place over, so we have to move the decimal one place over on the inside, or the dividend as well. And so the decimal point goes right there. And then we need to add at least several zeros. Now notice, as we're going through this problem, we do 1 times 42 is 42, subtract and get 8, bring down the 0. 42 goes into 89 times, 9 times, I'm sorry. 42 goes into 80 one time, 1 times 42 is 42, subtract and get 38, bring down the 0. 42 goes into 389 times, 9 times 42 is 378, subtract and get 2, bring down the 0. 42 goes into 20 no times, we put the 0, and then they quit. They just stopped doing the problem. That's not because they gave up, it's because the directions specifically said round to the nearest hundredth. So to round to the nearest hundredth, which is right in this place value, you only need three decimals all total. Now we can round. Because this is a zero, we know it will stay a nine, and the answer is approximately 1.19. That's not our exact answer, that's our rounded answer, which is okay because that's what the directions said. Make sure to read your directions very carefully. And again, the answer will be positive because we have the same sign. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. Notice how we have the squiggly equal sign. That's the approximate sign. That is because we rounded our answer. So the answer is not exactly 1.19. It's a close to or about 1.19. Now let's talk about how you can use estimating to check your answer. Suppose a student was asked to estimate the quotient 580.44 divided by 2.8 using front end rounding and then find the exact answer. Find the error in the student's solution that follows. So if we start with rounding, we're doing 600 divided by 3, which is about 200. Their answer is 27.3. Now there's two ways they could have possibly made a mistake. One is that they simply have the decimal in the wrong spot, and it should be here but it's pretty obvious that we're only going to move the decimal one place, so the decimal looks like it's in the right spot. 
But now let's see about things, if everything lined up in the right place value. We first, we can't do 2 into 5, but we could do 2 into 58, but you have nothing written above the 8. That is the issue. This 2 should have been written here above the 8, because 28 went into 58 two times. Then we subtracted and got a 2 and brought down the 0. 28 didn't go into 20, so we should have indicated that with a 0. So our correct answer should have been 207.3. So again, it is always a good idea to estimate first to have a rough idea where your answer should be. You can catch some of these silly mistakes that students make very often. And lastly, we'll use the order of operations with decimals. Our order of operations is the same whether we're working with whole numbers, integers, fractions, or decimals. Our first step is to work inside parentheses or any other grouping symbols. Remember to be careful with parentheses. Sometimes they're there to say do something first, but sometimes they're just there to indicate that you're working with a negative number, or because you're multiplying, or because you have an exponent. They can be kind of tricky because they have multiple purposes. Once you've dealt with any parentheses, move on to exponents. Once you've dealt with all your exponents, do any multiplication and division from left to right, so you do them together. And then lastly, do any addition and subtraction, again, doing them together from left to right. Example, simplify 2.5 plus parentheses negative 6.3 parentheses squared plus 9.62. Well, st even though we have parentheses, there isn't actually an operation here. These parentheses are just because we have a negative number. So we'll start with exponents. Negative 6.3 squared is negative 6.3 times itself, which is 39.69. Write that down. Notice how everything else stays lined up exactly where it was. Be very careful with your organization. Do all of your steps on the left and then do any arithmetic on the right. Now we're going to add from left to right. So we'll start with these two. We get 42.19. And then lastly, we'll add these two and we get 51.81. Your final answer is 51.81. Example. Simplify 1.82 plus parenthesis 5.2 minus 6.7 parenthesis and then another parenthesis 5.8 parenthesis. This set of parentheses has an operation to do. This set of parentheses is just there because of a multiplication. So we'll start with this parenthesis since it has an operation. 5.2 minus 6.7 is a negative 1.5. Be careful with your negatives. A lot of you lost points on your exam because you made silly mistakes with your negatives. Be very, very careful with them. Again, do your arithmetic on the side of the paper so it doesn't um, mix, up, mix up or mess up your order of operations. Everything else gets copied down exactly where it was. Now we have an addition and a multiplication. Multiplication happens before addition. So multiply negative 1.5 times 5.8, we get negative 8.7. And then lastly, complete this addition, which gives you a negative 6.88. That is your final answer. And lastly, simplify 3.7 squared minus 1.8 divided by 5, parentheses 1.5, using the order of operations. We have parentheses, but it's just here for a multiplication, so we'll start with exponents instead. 3.7 squared is 13.69. Now we have a subtraction, a division, and a multiplication. Division and multiplication happen together from left to right. Since the division is on the left, you must do that first. 1.8 divided by 5 will give you 0.36. Now we'll multiply, we get 0.54, and lastly subtract, and you get 13.15. Again, do all of your actual arithmetic to the side so that it does not mix, um, miss up, mix up your order of operations. That concludes section 5.5. Your next step is to check the key for section 5.5. This is in D2L. Once you've checked the key, if you're in my face-to-face -face class, come to class and we'll go over some of the key points together and do group work. After that, complete the online homework for section 5.5 through my math lab, and lastly, start on section 5.6.